Good morning guys, welcome to the series on functions. This will be the first uh, quick video, I guess, of an introduction of what a function is. Um, well, I'm going to start off by looking at one function called y is equal to 2x plus 1. I'm going to look at what a function is, um, how they work, I guess, and then looking at function notation. Now, you should be pretty familiar with functions. Um, if you remember right back to when you first, well, really first began algebra with, in, in, in maths, um, we often looked at a function machine. For example, this function machine would be 2x plus 1, um, where basically you chucked in an x value and then it came out with a y value. Okay, this would often be referred to as your input value and then it come out with this output value of y. So, for example, if we use this function machine and we threw in x equals 1, and we threw that into this machine, we'd get two lots of 1 plus 1, which would pop out the value of, well, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, um, So basically, yeah, you chuck in your next value, and it comes out with a y value. You would remember also, most likely, you would have looked at these tables of values, because we used to look at functions in order to draw graphs, because that's basically what a function is. And we had x and y values. Often we use the negative 2 to, to positive 2, um, in order to help us to give us the values of the x and y axis uh, and both positive and negative values. So for example, if, if we did a function, um, we, we drew a table of values for this particular function, 2x plus 1, we'll be doing 2 times negative 2 um, plus 1, which would be negative 3. 2 times negative 1 plus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, as we saw above, and 2 to the 4 plus 1 is 5. So this was a function, okay? So basically, it's just, I guess, an equation of a straight line. Um, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be lots of different types of graphs, lots of different types of functions. Um, but basically, as we know, our x is our input and our y is our output. So let's have a look at function notation very very similar to what we're looking at at the moment so for example I'm just going to pop that out there we looked at the function of y is equal to 2x plus 1 well the way they write it they write start off with f I guess f, f referring to function and they put in brackets the thing that they will be substituting in now for the one above obviously where we were substituting in the x values okay x equals negative 2 negative 1 1 etc so what they do, they put the x in here, and they would say it's equal to 2x plus 1. So it tells me automatically that I'm substituting values for x into this particular function. We often refer to this as f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. That basically, f of x has the same value as y. Okay, y is equal to f of x, and you might see that around it as well. They basically interchange. They mean the same thing. So that is what we look at as a function. So for example, you might um, be given this particular question. They might give you f of x is equal to 3x minus 1. Okay, quite similar to one above. And they might say, find the value of f of 1. That means that basically, wherever you see that x value, okay, you're going to put 1. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 minus 1. Well, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, so f of 1 is equal to 2. Okay, so basically it is a substitution question where they're simply just telling you what x is equal to. And look, it won't always be f, you know, because likewise, you know how you sometimes you might have um, y equals 2x plus 1, you might have y equals 3x minus 1, you might even have y is equal to x squared um, plus 2. Obviously, if we keep on calling it f of x, then that's not going to really work out too well. So what they, they can call it f of x, they might call it as g of x, they might call it capital F of x. It all means the same thing, okay? It all just refers to what that function value will be once you substitute the x value into it. Um, and that's pretty much it about like functions. I'll also just um, make a statement about what makes a function a function as well, I guess. Um, looking back to that table of values, I won't draw a full table of values. Okay, I'm just going to draw just uh, the layout of our table. And let's say, for example, we use a function y is equal to x squared. Well, I should actually write f of x is equal to x squared. Now, if I was uh, putting into this thing, well, actually, we can do the whole table. Negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, and 4. 
Now what you'll notice, for every x value, there is only one y value. It can only be 4. It cannot be anything else. So looking at this, this function, we should know that this is going to be the function of a parabola, as it is y equals x squared, or f of x equal to x squared. Okay, it looks something like that. So f of x is equal to x squared. And you'll see for every single x value, for example, this x value here, I'm going to look up, there is just one y value. Another x value here, another y value. Another x value here, another y value. So every x value has one y value. There are some possibilities of some types of graphs. For example, we might draw the, a very brief graph of a circle, uh, which you may or may not have done so far. For example, I'm going to do that 2, negative 2, 2, and positive 2. So radius of 2. I'm going to sketch my... It's a pretty poor sketch. I apologize. But what you'll notice now, if I look at my x value, for example, here, if I go up, there's one y value. If I go down, there's another y value. So we call circles, they are not a function. In order for a function to work as a function, it can only have one, one y value for any x value. We often refer to this also as a, a vertical line test, which basically means if you can put a straight line down and it cuts it more than once, then it's not a function. So obviously the circle cuts it in two places. If I drop one here, you can see it only cuts it in one spot. Therefore, it is only um, it, it is a function because it only hits it once, one place. Um, I guess I'm going to just do one last thing too. I, I don't want to spend too long on this, but just a couple of the harder questions that I have seen go about, which they can rewrite something. They can write something like this: f of x is equal to. They might say um, if x is greater than one, um, it's going to be x. If x is equal to zero. Um, we've got x squared, and if x is less than 1, or let's say less than or equal to 1, um, it's going to be x plus 2, for example. And these can look really weird. And what they can then give you is something that looks like this. f of 1 plus f of 0 minus f of negative 4. And you think, okay, well, this looks pretty strange. Now, I don't only just have one f of x. I've got three different possible expressions for it. I've got x, x squared, x plus 2. Which one do I substitute my value into? Because we know that f of 1 means I'm going to put 1 where the x is. Do I put into all of them? Do I put into one of them? I'm going to get a little bit confused here. So what they've given us, though, in each of these expressions, they've given us some situations, some guidelines. For the first one, it says, if x is greater than or equal to 1, then the function is x, is equal to x. If x is equal to 0, then the function is equal to x squared. If the function, so if x is less than or equal to 1, the function is equal to x plus 2. So let's take the first example, function of 1. So this square is where x is equal to 1. So I look up here, and x is greater than or equal to 1, yes. So I'm going to use f of 1 to put it into that first um, value there. So I'm going to get that 1, put it where the x is. So x is 1, it's just 1. Obviously, if it was x squared, it'd be 1 squared. If it was x plus 2, it'd be 1 plus 2, 3. But in this case, I'm just choosing that first one here because x is equal to 1. So I'm, I've got a plus sign, I'm going to put a plus sign there. The next one says f of 0. So is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No, it's not. So we can't use that first function. Put in the next one, x, 0. Is x equal to 0? Yes, it is equal to 0. So we're going to put the 0 where the x is, and I'll now make it 0 squared. I think I've got minus. I've got another function. This time it's negative 4. Now, if I look at the first two, obviously negative 4 is not greater than or equal to 1. It doesn't equal 0, but it is less than or equal to 1. So we're going to use the function of x plus 2. So I'm going to put in here negative 4 plus 2. Two. So let's now simplify things as you would usually do. 1 plus 0 minus negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Two negatives will obviously make a positive. So my answer becomes 1 plus 2, which is 3. 
Okay, look, pretty tough question, pretty tough question. They can do little things like they can chuck like a four in front of the f, the function, which would mean, mean four times one, etc. cetera. Um, but just uh, it's a slightly strange question, but they do like to put them out a bit, okay? Look, this is a very brief in, um, introduction of functions, um, simply stating that functions, instead of writing it as y equals x squared, we use the notation of f of x is equal to x squared, where we are simply substituting the values for x. Okay, it may work exactly the same way as y equals x squared. Also to note that a function, for any function to be a function, for each y value, we can only have one x, uh, so each x value can only have one y value. If we do the vertical line test and it hits it more than once, like that circle we looked at, then it will not be a function. But if we use a parabola, it only hit it in one spot, therefore it was a function. Okay, very brief introduction. If you've got any questions, please let me know. If it was confusing, let me know, and I'll try to uh, simplify it a little bit more to you. Cheers, guys.